In this Clean After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a clean typographic element. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and you guys just know how I like keeping my graphics simple. So we're gonna go ahead and just create this. So I already have a new composition called Tutorial. I already put it in my text and a nice little background here. Um, hope you guys don't mind I put it in the text already, but I'm using the font Gotham, and it's one of my favorite fonts, but pretty much any sans serif font is gonna work just fine for sort of like these clean, flat sort of titles. So just keep that in mind, but since I already have my titles in here, what I want to do before I do anything else is I want to select my main title, which is typography, and I want to go up to layer pre-compose, and I'm going to call this one uh, main title, and then I'm going to select my subtitle, which is clean, and pre-compose that as well, and I'll call this one subtitle. And the reason why we do that is because we want to apply all the animation outside of our individual text layer so we can always go back into the original comps and change the text if we have to. So that's just important to keep in mind. But let's go and start animating this. So let's grab the main title, which is right here. I'll just drag this right on top of the subtitle. And we're going to hit P on our keyboard to bring up the position. And we're going to move over by a few frames, maybe by like 11 frames or something. And we're going to add a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch. And we'll move this keyframe just forward in time by maybe by like a second. And we will just move the X position off to the side, maybe like right here. So then this will kind of just come on just like this. And let's select both these keyframes and hit F9 on our keyboard to make these easy as keyframes. And let's grab the subtitle text. Let's hit P on our keyboard. And let's go back by a few frames here. And let's add a keyframe there. Let's move that keyframe forward in time and then maybe by a second, and then let's go ahead and just X position this from the left. So now we'll kind of have this, and of course let's make these two keyframes easy as keyframes as well by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So let's go ahead and pre-compose these layers once more, and I'll call this one uh, hashtag main title, because you know I want to be extra clean with the hashtag. So let's go ahead and move all attributes into new composition and click OK. And then let's do the same thing with subtitle, and we'll call this one uh, at subtitle. And I'm just being really silly with these, but move all attributes into new composition. And this way we can just always reposition these if we have to, instead of having to go through those keyframes and things like that. So now, if we, obviously, if we move this and change the position of this, it's not going to affect the keyframes at all. So just a really quick way to you know just keep it simple. So let's start off maybe by creating some of the lines at the top here. So let's grab, let's say, the uh, pen tool over here. And let's just kind of click a point like right here at the top and go all the way across just like this. And then you'll have like a uh, just a stroke like this, but we gotta go to up to the top here where it says fill. Click on the word, turn off the fill, and then go to the stroke. Click the word stroke and set it to uh, solid color, and click OK. And we'll keep it at white. And I'm using uh, five uh, pixels for our width of our stroke. And there you have it. And so let's, let's go here. Let's open the shape layer. Actually, let's rename the shape layer. Let's call it uh, top line one. And let's open this up, go into the contents, and let's add a uh, trim paths. And let's open up trim paths one. And let's say we want this to come on like right here. So let's set the end percentage to 0%. And let's add a keyframe for end percentage. And let's move forward in time maybe by like a little bit more like the, of a second. And we'll set this all the way to 100%. So then we kind of have this. And then let's go and duplicate this layer. And let's set the stroke color to, you know, maybe like a secondary logo color or something like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the last keyframe here. And we're going to just set the end percentage to probably about like 80% or 90%. And then let's just offset this layer by a couple of frames. So then the line will come on and then we see the green line right behind it. And then they'll both stop. And of course, I forgot, let's make all these keyframes easy as keyframes as well. And then let's duplicate top line two once more. And let's hit U on our keyboard, bring up keyframes, go to the last keyframe here and offset the end by a little bit. And we'll change the color to maybe our primary uh, logo color, which I'll just use my uh, logo color there and click OK. And, you know, and once again, let's offset this by a couple of frames. I went ahead and set the stroke to 10 pixels, just went to the top over here and set it to 10. And that looks pretty good. We might need to grab all three layers and just bring them up by a little bit. And let's go and maybe duplicate, you know, line top line one and three. Just duplicate it by going up to edit, duplicate. And let's go ahead and just put it right here. And let's rename these. We'll call this one uh, bottom line one. And we'll call this one bottom line two. 
and let's take these two and put them between our text layers, kind of like right here. All right, and then let's go ahead and open up bottom line one, let's turn off bottom line two, and let's go into the contents, let's go into the trim paths, and let's set the, let's add a keyframe for the start, which we'll add like right here. And we'll move this forward in time past the second keyframe here, and we'll start to animate the start just like that. So now we scrub through here, we have just a smaller line, and maybe we'll actually move that end keyframe forward a little bit. And we'll make both these start keyframes easy as keyframes as well, F9. And then, you know, we're looking pretty good. Let's go and maybe move this keyframe over just by a touch the start keyframe. And we should be fine. And let's change the stroke color of this one to our pink. And then let's turn on bottom line too. And let's kind of do the same thing with the start keyframes. I'll just go here, copy the start keyframes, and I'll go to the contents go in the trim paths and I'll just, you know, paste them right there, move them over a little bit. And then let's set the stroke to white. Of course, make sure you set the end percentage to 100% for that one. And then there yeah, we're looking pretty good. So we now have some of these lines and maybe what I'll do is select both of our bottom lines here and we'll just offset them just by a little bit more so they don't, you know, come on at the same time as our lines at the top. And then I also will set my bottom lines here to five pixels. Then let's go to layer, new, solid. And we can call this one, uh, you know, maybe uh, main box. And we'll click OK. And let's put this layer right above our main title here. And let's just go and grab the rectangle tool. And let's just like draw out like a, a mask, kind of just like this to cover up our text. Very thin, clean like that. And let's make sure uh, that this layer is selected. And let's just go ahead and uh, hold down Command or Control on a PC and double click the pan behind tool at the top here so the anchor point is centered. Let's go to the line tab and just try to center this up in the middle of our composition because now that'll be right in the middle of our typography text. Let's start animating this mask. So let's go ahead and open up the mask one here and then let's add a keyframe for the mask path. And then I wanna make sure we select both of these keyframes at the uh, left, right side here and bring this all the way in until like the keyframes are overlapping each other or sorry, the vertices are overlapping each other. And then move forward in time by like, you know, by 10 or 12 frames. And then let's just go here and drag both of these vertices back out kind of to like right here. And then let's drag these two back vertices in a little bit. And then let's go over one more and let's put these two front vertices right over here and grab these two back vertices over here and try to finish up the animation just like that. And then let's do ourselves a favor and let's just drag out these keyframes a little bit so we can create some more timing here. Maybe I'll just offset the entire layer by a touch. And then I'll go right back into the main title and we'll just maybe make these keyframes a little bit longer. Okay, so let's go and duplicate our main title text and let's put it right on top of our main box layer, which is this white solid. And let's set the track mat for the main box here to alpha inverted mat. And then we'll kind of have you know, we'll be able to kind of see through that. If we turn off our main title down here, you'll see that we can see right through that. So the only thing we have to do now is kind of just mask out, uh, you know, the box here on our main title down here. So let's go to our main box layer. Let's hit M on our keyboard to bring up the mask keyframes. Let's go to the first keyframe here and let's select all the keyframes, copy them, go to our main title and paste them right onto our main title down here. And then set the mask to subtract. So as you can see, it's pretty close and you probably could leave it at that uh, because it's just gonna be going by kind of fast. But what I suggest, I mean, maybe you should perfect it a little bit. So maybe make sure all the keyframes are selected and just move them over by a touch. And you might just need to scrub through these to make sure they're pretty consistent right on top of where the box is at. And it's a pretty easy fix. So now we should be pretty consistent here and we are. And of course, maybe we should make all these keyframes, you know, easy as keyframes as well, because we want this like this nice smooth animation. So we can take this further. Let me select the, both of these uh, and let me change the color of these so we won't get confused. And let's take our, you know, alpha inverted in our little uh, composition here. Let's duplicate them. Then let's grab our main box here and let's just offset it just by maybe a frame or two. And let's select the bottom box down here and let's go up to a layer, solid settings, and let's grab our primary logo color. So we'll go to the middle keyframe here and we'll select both the back vertices here and just, you know, crease the mask like, kind of like that. And there, that way it'll kind of try to match up as best as we can uh, without actually having to do too much work. We'll just like move that forward by a touch. 
maybe we'll bring this in right here and then maybe we'll just move this back by a little bit as well. Yeah, so I kind of went frame by frame there to kind of match that up. And then basically we'll want to do the same thing for the clean text down here. And all I did this time was, you know, created a new layer and we'll call this one sub box. And I grabbed the rectangle tool once before and I just basically created a smaller sort of mask like this. And you know, it's the same principles, but you select one vertice over here on the right and you hold down shift and move the arrow key forward by a little bit. And then do the same thing for the back vertice over here. And this way you'll kind of create like sort of a little bit of an angled box. So it's not exactly, you know, consistent and nice, but I mean, this is definitely nice. So, so go ahead and repeat the typography step for the subtitle box. All right, so now that we have this part animating, which is exactly the same as a typography text, you know, all I did I, I was I didn't enclose the mask all the way on the subtitle box. I kind of kept it open as you can see. So that way we can kind of see what's going on, but it's, pretty, it's exactly the same as doing this. That's why I'm not going to repeat it. Now, what I suggest doing for our uh, main box here, because it doesn't, you know, you can still see it there. What we can do is hit U on our keyboard, bring up the keyframes. So let's go to like the last keyframe here for our main box and go up to edit split layer and delete the new splitted layer. And do the same thing for our main box here. Just go to the last keyframe, split it and delete it. And that way we won't see it on there and we're looking pretty good. So we basically did this entire animation. So let's go ahead and reverse it. And what I suggest doing is I'm having to deal with keyframes. First off, let's go ahead and select all of our layers, except for our background layers. And let's just offset everything by a few frames. So it doesn't all like come on right away. And then of course you can always see little errors. So we go back into our main title over here. And then one little error I forgot to do, if you, the text pops out here, just go through the individual keyframes here and let's just you know cover this up. kind of like that so we don't see the text. And it's just a quick little fix. Just go ahead and go through each of these keyframes and cover up the top of the text if this happens to you. And you know, it's not a really big deal. I'm not really 100% consistent here, but just go through here and kind of just match it up as best as you can. And that way, you know, we're looking really good. So let's go and select all of these layers here, except for maybe our background layers, go up to layer, pre-compose, and we'll call this one all animated. And then let's go to like maybe three seconds here. Let's go and split the layer, delete it, and let's grab our layer here, let's duplicate it. Right click the layer and click on time, and click on time reverse layer. And we can just come here, offset it a little bit, patch it up. And this way, we'll have it coming on and we'll have it animating out. And of course, let's go right back into the composition here and let's talk about switching the modes and turn on motion blur for all of our layers and especially at the top here. So after a quick render, this is what we have and it just looks very clean uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.